and thanks for joining us today. We're going to be making several different types of pizza, so we call this section Pizza with Pizzazz. And who doesn't love pizza? Oh, uh, we love pizza. 94% <laughs> of the U.S. population eats pizza. It's a very, very popular food in the U.S. It's a great food to serve at parties. It's a great food for your family because the, the pizza itself represents several different food groups, mm -hmm. so it can be sort of like um, an entire meal in one dish. It's a way to entertain guests and you can allow them to put on their favorite toppings on their own individual pizza. It's even fun to put a pizza party out on your patio mm -hmm. and, and grill a pizza and, and make that the focus of your, of your meal or your party. Yeah, it's a great party pleaser. Well, the first thing we're gonna talk about is some different options for the crust. And we have a few examples here today. Um, this one here, and actually both of these, are what we would term as ready-made crust. All you do is take them out of the package, add your toppings, put it in the oven, and instant pizza, just about as fast as you can get, make it. Um, this is more shaped more like a pizza, and it also has some cheese incorporated into. This type of crust is a thin flatbread. Um, it can also be used as a wrap. Uh, this particular flatbread is a tomato flavored um, flatbread with some whole wheat uh, products in it. So that can add some flavor and some nutrition to it. Um, we do recommend when you're using a flatbread that you pre-bake it first to get a little crispness on it um, and then it'll stay crispier when you bake it in the oven. Another option is to use pizza and a pizza crust out of a can. And basically, um, this is dough, and you pop open the can, spread it out on your pizza pan, add the toppings, and bake it. Pretty easy, I and mean, a lot closer to homemade. There are also packaged dry mixes. All the ingredients are in the bag or in the carton, and you just add water. So that's another example of almost homemade. But for a truly homemade pizza, what Cheryl and I like to do is really make homemade pizza dough. And this is a dough that um, is made with some whole wheat flour. And you can also incorporate a lot of different ingredients to add flavor, such as oregano, basil, garlic powder. You can even bump up the fiber in this with adding um, ground flaxseed or even wheat germ or wheat bran. So there's a lot of options with homemade dough. Yeah. And you might say, well, why go to the trouble of making your own pizza at home? And there are lots of reasons to do this. For one, it's just a lot of fun to do. It's one of my favorite things to make. Mm -hmm. But also you can save some money and you can create the kind of pizza that you and your family really like. It, let's just compare a couple of different ways that pizza can, can be either purchased ready-made or comparing it to make it, making it yourself at home. This stone right here is about a 14-inch stone. So let's compare this size of pizza. A supreme pizza, if you, if you ordered a carry-out pizza from a restaurant, it would be about $13. If you would make your own pizza at home, make your own crust and add your own toppings, about $4.50. So there's quite a bit of savings there. If you wanted to even uh, just make a veggie pizza, perhaps use some of the, the vegetables you have in your garden, you can get it down to $2.25 for a 14-inch pizza, and maybe even a little less. And that's a big savings. It is a big savings. All right. Well, there, we're, the first pizza that we're going to make here is a um, salsa-type pizza. And you can be very creative with the type of pizzas that you're wanting to make, whether it's a Thai pizza or Mexican, barbecue, seafood. One of our favorite pizzas is a seafood um, uh, pizza that's on a crisp flatbread with grilled shrimp and uh, grilled chicken on it. It's really tasty. And then, of course, you can always have a dessert pizza, pizza which has some fruit in it. But we're going to start simple today and make a salsa pizza. And you may not have thought about using salsa as the sauce or, or sauce base for your pizza, but it's actually very tasty. And the difference between salsa and your pizza sauce is probably that it has a little fresher taste and maybe not quite as sweet as a pizza sauce. And you can use already made uh, salsa or you can make your own. Once your garden gets growing, you can make your own salsa and create your own mixture. We're going to start today with three-fourths cup of salsa. And to make this entire recipe, you'll need one cup of a Monterey Jack cheese or some type of a pizza cheese. It doesn't have to be um, Armani Jack or mozzarella. Any of those will work. 
and you add a half a cup of the cheese in with the salsa and you also add two tablespoons of cilantro. And this is all mixed together. This is about as easy as a pizza can get. If you have your pre-made crust, just to uh, add three or four other ingredients. And then we'll spread this over the base of the, on the base of the pizza onto the pre-made crust. and spread it out to about a half an inch of the edge of the crust. And there's many different kinds of pans that can be used. And we have some examples over here. Um, one is just a basic cooking sheet, uh, such as this. Um, another option is a pizza pan, and this has some perforations in it, and then it has its own tray that you rest it in and that helps keep the steam off the bottom of the crust after it's been baked so your crust doesn't get soggy. And then another option, this is actually in the shape of a pizza pie, but this has little bubbles on it and that helps um, keep the crust off the complete bottom of the pan. And then there's also the flat um, style of pizza pans. And if you have any other fun little gadgets that you can use, and one example is for if you're making homemade dough, or if you're using one of these um, can type doughs, uh, you can roll it out onto, onto uh, actually this is a pie crust mat, so you can get the right size and then transfer it over to your pan. And the easiest way that I find to do that is you roll your pizza crust out on the pl onto the, the pie crust uh, form and then just flip it over and peel it off of the, mm -hmm. the crust maker and that really makes it easy. We're going to finish our salsa pizza. All that's left to do is put the remaining half a cup of cheese on the pizza and then bake it at a 425 degree oven for about 12 to 13 minutes. This is a great pizza to use as an appetizer or one that you can add a salad to it for a meal and just about as easy as you can get to make your homemade pizza. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. And there is our baked salsa pizza. Cheese is nicely melted. Then we'll just take a pizza cutter. If you're serving this as an appetizer, you want to cut it into smaller pieces. If it's part of your meal, about eight slices is, is right. And it's ready to eat. All right. <laughs> These recipes and more are available on the Watt Kansas website. That's www.wattkansas.org. Or you can contact your local extension office.